Welcome all, Steve Parisi here with IBC Global. Hope you're having a great morning. So today we have on our podcast, what I refer to as number one here with us, the number one agent, <laughs> and that's got several meanings. Um, she's been with us longer than any other agent. So we've got one of our agents uh, on our podcast this morning, Stephanie Transu. Stephanie, how you doing this morning? I'm doing great, Steve, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. Thank you. So yeah, that joke number one that came up recently, actually, with someone we were working with. Um, but yeah, it's got several meanings. I mean, number one, because you you have you've been the top agent here for a while, um, but you've also been here in house longer than any other agent. You were here in the good old days when we were starting everything out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, certainly. Well, really appreciate you taking some time today. I know you've got a ton going on uh, just with working with your clients and everything going on today. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Always happy to. So I guess to begin, Steph, to kind of help everyone to get get to know you a little bit better, because a lot of people that work with us, with our company, do know you. They've seen you on a couple of our videos before, um, or they've talked to you when they've worked with me. My question that I think a lot of people would ask is, how did you get into the insurance industry to start? Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, actually, I got into the insurance business a little bit over three years ago. Um, initially, I was working with a, a captive company, uh, focusing more on the elderly field or retirees. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I did, you know, we did a lot of ins uh, life insurance, uh, Medicare supplements, short-term care, long-term care policies and such. So I initially wanted to find something that was flexible, but at the same time, competitive. Mm -hmm. That's why I got into insurance. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. And the company uh, that you started with, actually, a lot of people don't know this, was the same company I started with when I first, first got into the insurance industry. And I bombed out. I didn't make it there. I didn't like it at all. And then I got into the whole designer world, designing policies, but started out at the exact same place, exact same office, I think, too, actually. Yep. Same yeah. office. Yeah, small world. So when we when we first met from a business standpoint, because you and my wife knew each other before I knew knew you, you guys are friends. Um, so when we first met, like my question is, what were your initial thoughts when you came to the office and we talked about, hey, here's what we do as a company with cash value life insurance. You've got the idea of the banking concept. What were some initial thoughts you had? And be completely honest. <laughs> Damn, it's too good to be true. <laughs> well, I hear you. I know you've said that before. So no, and a lot of times that's the case though, where people feel, hey, is it a scam? Too good to be true? Because we're talking about life insurance and we throw all of this extra stuff in there too. So as you can continue to learn about it, what kind of made you decide to say, okay, I was working at the at another job successfully too, as a person brand new in the insurance industry, what helped you or, or what made you decide to kind of make that shift over to this cash value life insurance world? Well, one of the great, the big things that I saw, you know, especially when you talk to me and you show me what, what you did, I was like, well, I never did this before, you know, especially with life insurance. Uh, we did a lot of policies where the client was looking for a death benefit and the cash value took for a, a long time to accumulate. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute, wait, you can decide where your money's going, whether it's going into cash or it's going into paid up positions. No clue. So that was really interesting to me um, because a lot of the people that, you know, back at, at the other insurance company, a lot of people I talked to were like, well, I don't want to pay a premium that would just pay out a death benefit and I'm not going to benefit from it. So that was a big thing for me. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, thanks for going into that. Um, so. Here's kind of more of a, a personal question. I've asked you this before, especially with the other agents. When you started here, it was by no means the company what it is today. It was me. Do we have one full-time assistant? Um, I, I know Dara was here. Joy, we're, we're here. We had a couple people, some other part-time agents that really weren't working out. Like, <laughs> why? Because the other company you worked for was established corporate office and say, okay, Here's a guy that this place obviously used to be a garage turned into an office, but hey, I'm going to start working over here. Like, I'm curious why you did that. <laughs> Actually, well, initially when we initially talked, you yeah. know, I walked in and, you know, you did have a, 
a few people that are still on, but it wasn't a big, you know, a big office. It was not structured as it is now. I think it's pretty amazing to see the office, the way that it grew to what it is now. Uh, but I was like, okay, well, here's this um, Steve Carisi doing really well for himself and he's growing an agency. There must be something to this. You know, why not take a chance and see how it goes? Um, another factor too, my husband, Scott Transu, he was very supportive. Um, so he said, hey, it's different, but try it out. See how you feel. Um, and opposed to the other agency, I think the leads were a big difference. You know, with the other agency, these leads were called by number of different agents and they were getting tired of it. So with the leads here, there were more, uh, I guess, focused. Hey, this is what I want to do. We are targeting a certain market and the people that we, we call or deal with, they know they've gone into different information. They, they're studying it themselves. So I thought that was a big, big thing, a big difference compared to two agencies. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, thanks for going into that. A bit more qualified uh, as far as the, the lead flow standpoint. And, you know, that's that's interesting. It kind of leads into another another piece, because when you are in the insurance industry as an agent, right, the idea of leads can be a little bit scary because you don't know what you're going to get. Um, and, and, you know, it's it's funny when you mention that I hear the word lead and technically that that's what it is. I guess I just don't view it when I see people come through that term lead doesn't pop in my head. But at this point, you know me, I've got a weird brain. Um, so your biggest strength, in my opinion, and why you've done very well here and why your clients really enjoy working with you, I would say is definitely your listening skills where when someone has a situation, they've got a plan they're working on. Actually, you sit down, listen to them, take the time, and then show multiple options instead of just saying, here's a cookie cutter option, what we do for everyone. And, you know, a lot of people do that. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. But taking the time to actually listen to individuals is certainly a strength of yours, I've noticed. So good job with that. Keep it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, certainly. So as you've worked with clients over the years, um, how can I phrase this? Stories that you have or some good experiences, what clients that you've really enjoyed working with um, or people that you, you come in contact with, you've really, really been able to help them say, hey, I didn't know I could do that with cash value life insurance. Just, you know, some of your favorite stories. It could be one, two, if you prefer. I'm um, sure. Um, you know, one thing that I hear a lot is why didn't I start this long time ago? You know, why didn't I hear about this, yeah. you know, years ago? Um, so I think it's pretty exciting to, to see where a lot of people are placing their money into different kinds of investments. And there, it's not as liquid. You know, you have to pass different hoops, you know, in order to get that money. So by saying, hey, I can place this money somewhere safe, but at the same time, I can take it back out. Like, you know, right away, I don't have to go through different things. So dealing, I've dealt with a lot of clients where they're excited about that. It makes me happy too. Or they've had um, policies already, in, you know, with the high cash value. Performance wise was not that great. Mm -hmm. And the company selection wasn't that great. So seeing, hey, this is what I have. Can you show me a comparison? Can you actually show me a company that has actual performance? You know, I, this company promised me this number, but I'm not hitting it. You know, I'm not breaking even. So by us going in and structuring a policy where it's working for them and giving them the high cash value, that excites me. And it makes me happy to know, hey, you know, we're helping people out, you know, making, the, making their money work for them. And there's no regrets to that. And I think that's very important. Yeah, I 100% agree that last piece, thanks for, for going into that. And the last piece, no regrets, where they put pay their money into a product. And we always educate individuals and you do this phenomenally as far as, hey, when you pay a dollar into a policy, educating them, your money can go toward the premium, the PUA component. Here's how you maximize the cash value, safe, liquid, tax-free, all that good stuff that you just touched on. But the no regrets piece where like our big thing as a company, and you do this with every single client I see you work with, is you want to make sure that they are set up in the absolute best product based on, you know, depending on the company, how much flexibility they want, how long they want to pay into the policy, right? All the different companies, the different rules. It's a lot to take in. 
right? And we still learn stuff no matter how much you, you know, there's always going to be new things that, that pop up because insurance companies are going to come up with new products, update the industry, whatever it might be. But putting them in a position where there's no regrets or I'll often refer to it as no buyer's remorse because the last thing that we ever want is to put someone in a product, especially when they live 2,000 miles away from us and we don't have that in-person relationship like we would with someone else. And then they find out they could have gotten a better deal, call it, from their local advisor or elsewhere. Then all of a sudden, like who's... Who's the bad guy? Yeah, which we don't want. So now, great, great job on that. So you've been here. How long have you been here? You've been in the industry a little over three years. A little bit over three years. I've been working with you before you for the last two years and two months now. Wow. There's a time go. Oh yeah, time flies so fast. You're telling me. So a little over two years. We've changed a lot. So as a business, just, just how the company moves. And I, I guess I could say how you interact with clients today compared to how it used to be. What are some of the biggest changes you noticed? Um, I think the structure, you know, I think it's pretty exciting to see how, you know, when I first walked in, didn't know, you know, although I was in the insurance business, what we do, it's completely different. Yeah. Opposed to, you know, life insurance or, you know, different products or just selling, mm -hmm. you know, I like appreciate that we go through different processes. Hey, let's go through the education. And one thing that I appreciate, you know, as an agency owner, you know, looking at you and seeing your transparency and the education, your knowledge that you are imparting or sharing with the agents, I think that's pretty amazing. Uh, and there's a great structure now, you know, opposed to being, hey, a small agency, now over 20 employees, that's pretty exciting. So, you know, and it's just more content. You know, we do have, you know, like you said, there's a lot of different moving parts to these policies or different changes. So you as uh, uh, Stephen Parisi, you're always giving new content out there, you know, and keeping up with everything. You know, you're not, you're the type of person that you're, you like to, okay, you hear something, but like, let me investigate. Let me really learn this. Let me look into the details. And I think that's really important because then you fully understand it. And then you're like, okay, here's client. This is what we know. And this is what we think might be the best move for you. Um, and I think that's a great quality as a, as a leader, you know, and having you as teaching us and helping us out. Got, well, gotcha. Thank you. Much appreciated. You've definitely got that, that quality and that, that work ethic as far as digging in as well. I mean, I've learned a lot of times where you're digging into a product or situation and saying, Hey, like, What's going on here? And I look at it like, I guess we got to dig into it more because I'm not really seeing the math or where it's working out. <laughs> so we sit down and figure it out, which is fun. I, I mean, that's going to, to pop up. Um, yeah. And we're always looking at, you know, additional resources. Um, the actuary has been a huge, huge help, wealth and knowledge as well. Scott Witt, um, just working with him recently. And I knew him years ago, um, but that's another story. Um, so when, when we did start, what's interesting is it used to be one-on-one -on -one meetings with everyone we worked with. And a lot of times, I mean, that's how I learned in the business years ago, in addition to designing policies. But for you and probably Phil, because he started kind of at the same time, he, we found him through you, actually. We would not have, I would not have known him if it wasn't for you. Um, but for you guys especially, we had that one-on-one -on -one meeting with clients, just that constant repetition which does go a long way in a learning learning curve. Um, and we'll still do that with people too. I mean, for anyone that wants a meeting, that is extremely valuable. Have meetings with them. Our big thing is make it as convenient as possible for the consumer. Right? You hear me talk, how many times do I mention Amazon throughout the week, copying them? <laughs> they got to figure it out. But if someone wants a meeting, you know, it's okay, let's give them a meeting. But we used to do one-on-one -on -one meetings nonstop. It was between five and eight per day going. Compared to when you started with one-on-one -on -one meetings, compared to now, how many one-on-one -on -one meetings are in there? That's a good question. It's not as much, yeah. you know, and the reason for that is, you know, we're, we're giving more information, more education, um, and, you know, you're giving great ideas where, hey, you know, certain consumers or clients may ask a certain question. Why not step ahead of that and maybe do a video, 
you know, explaining what we're sending over but to make it easier, you know, and by giving the information and making it easier for the client, it's a little bit quicker, especially with the volume that we're getting. I mean, you have been, you've been, you, you're placing different teams. You know, we have a case assigned team now and it's growing and it's amazing. You know, we have uh, another team doing the spreadsheets, you know, and, and that's exciting seeing everything. We have a uh, media and of course you have Dara. Dara is like the brain, you know, as much, yeah. oh, so much. Sure. And that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, getting ahead of everything. Um, now from time to time, we do have, uh, uh, you know, meetings because I think that's important too. Um, especially with uh, certain clients where they say, hey, you know, I'm looking into this or, you know, I've been burnt in the past. And I think that at that time, it's just best to have the one on one, mm -hmm. you know, to make sure to, we're answering every single question, every concern. Uh, but it's not as much as before. I think it's just flowing a little bit, you know, easier and a little bit faster. Sure. More education up front, because while you have less meetings, I mean, the amount of people you work with today compared to back then is probably like seven or eight times as much in reality. So you're you're working with more people. I think what it's an, an attest to is you're just you become extremely efficient as far as getting information to individuals, whether it's a phone call, whether it's a meeting, whether it's a recording, whatever it might be. It's just how, again, do you make everything as convenient and transparent for the individual that you're working with? So once you kind of once you have the knowledge and then you can hone in on that, that allows one to become very efficient from a productivity standpoint. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. So no, you, you do a great job on that. Keep it up. So uh, an interesting story. You had mentioned your, your husband, Scott, earlier was kind of a huge help for you giving it, giving it a shot here which I'm extremely thankful for <laughs> because you've been a huge help to us as a company in a lot of ways. So bef he works here now. He does. How long was he in a separate industry before he even got into the insurance industry? Far too long. Um, <laughs> 25 years actually working for the same company. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. The funny thing is that his father has been in the insurance industry for the last 40 years. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. so it blew my mind that, you know, it took him 25 years to say, hey, let me try this out. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. No, I'm, I'm glad he does. I mean, he is very good, very personable, sincere guy. And everybody can tell that on the phone every time they talk to him, too. It's a strength. And it, it goes a long way, in my opinion. So last thing I want to touch, touch on, um, only the people that have talked to you about this know this. How many, uh, how many languages do you speak, Steph? Oh, okay. Fully, fully. I speak um, Spanish, Spanish and English. Mm -hmm. um, I know a few Italian, you know, I could get myself yeah. by. Yeah. Um, not too fluent on it. Um, and some Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. That we haven't, haven't run into, but individuals that speak Spanish and even Italian a little bit that we haven't been able to help. Like I couldn't, I couldn't help. I mean, my last name is Parisi. I'm Italian, but I can't speak Italian other than saying my name is Steve Michimo Stefano. Like that's all, that's it. <laughs> that's all I got. So you've been a huge help there. And I know we've, we've just started talking about other avenues in, as well, because your knowledge as far as the banking concept and cash value insurance, like, you know it. I mean, I'd be confident in you progressing through all this, even like if you're on your own, if you're with the company, like you've got enough knowledge at this point. So it's kind of like, how do you get to that next level? What are some things you can continue to expand into and you can certainly leverage that skill that you have naturally or that you've learned, I should say, of other languages. Um, but yeah, if anyone is ever interested in working with us that speaks Spanish or just Spanish to start stuff, you don't mean to overdo it. Yeah, don't, don't, don't give me work now, Steve. Come on. All right. All right. I, I know. <laughs> I know. But no, I mean, you've been, been great, great working here. I certainly appreciate you working here and everything you've done, the learning experience with everything. Anything, and so I, I asked you about client experiences and such. All right, so what is, what's the favorite thing you have about working here? And then what's the thing you like the least about working here? My favorite thing, I would say, you know, just interacting with a lot of individuals, you know, from different states. You know, I think we, because, you know, license, being licensed in different states, we have more of a market or more, but, you know, places that we can work and help people out. 
Uh, so I think it's pretty interesting or, you know, something that I really appreciate is just, you know, hey, we're giving this information or this education and we're helping people out fully. You know, not not say, hey, you know, I'm you know, not to say with different agencies, but, you know, as, uh, as a lot of, of you know, uh, there's different ways to design policies, you know, with different splits and such. Um, and as an agency, you know, we're doing the maximum cash possible for the client. So hearing different people say, hey, I've seen these policies structured in a certain way, but there's, it's not as efficient as to what you guys do. And I think that, you know, we're looking more as, hey, let's help out as, as many people that we can in more volume. And I think that's pretty exciting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we hear different things, you know, whether it's competition or different agencies, but I'm like, hey, we're doing what we know what's best. You know, not for our interest, our own commission, we're thinking about the client. Correct. And that is my favorite part. Thanks for, for mentioning that. Yeah, and, and I know we've we've had meetings on that as far as you know competitive cases and such. And like, like my big thing is when a competitive case comes up, and you guys probably hate it because it results in more work. I'm like, you know, if someone wants to see different options or questioning anything, you know, we can explain it to them and say, hey, you want to go with our way because it's the best. But that's often what people are used to. Think of it this way. If you went to purchase a new car and you were shopping between two different brands, Ford and Chevy, and the Chevy dealership did nothing but tell you Ford stinks and just beats up their competition, you're like, hey, come on, man. It's a turn, it's a turn off, right? So my thing is like, well, we've got the ability to show Ford and Chevy different policy designs, different companies, whatever it might be. So my big thing is, show them the different options. You know, if it's, we talk about policy design, you know, where we talk about that, that 10 X limitation, we can 10 X the base premium with some companies, some let you go lower, some don't let you go as aggressive. If someone wants to see a 30% or 50% premium, like my thing is show them. I mean, there's no, nothing wrong with showing them it because if they see it up front, they don't feel like nothing's hidden. They see how it works, pros and cons, all that good stuff. And I know you've done that several times, a lot of times with existing clients too, when they've already initiated, they want to see something else. Hey, can we make an adjustment? And a lot of times people view that in the industry as a whole as a burden. I got to go back and do this. But I was like, no, like I want to make sure the person understands it and is satisfied and working with me. Like they got to have that good feeling. Yes. Yeah. And you've, you've done that without complaining about it or, or anything like that, which, and I say that before running a business, I saw that all the time in the industry, just the complaints like, oh, I got to do this extra work for the client. I'm like, they gave you, you put their money in a product with you. Like, what, what are you complaining about? <laughs> like, you know, if you want that client to stay with you and say, hey, you know, here's my agent. I never heard from them or, you know, they're, they're not giving me what I want to see or hear. You know, I think that interaction is always very important. Yeah. And different options. You know, and one thing, too, with the with, uh, you know, people that we talk to and work with they're consistently educating themselves, you know, with everything changing, which I appreciate because I can say, hey, I can confidently come up and say, we have the best structure or you have the best policy possible. Mm -hmm. You know, if you wanna see what it would look like if it was a uh, different split, you know, and then looking at the long-term performance or looking at the current cash value and such, I think that's very important. And, and I appreciate that actually, because it just gives me conviction. You know, it's like, hey, we. We got this. We're we're doing well. We're right. helping you out the most that we can. Right on. Keep it up. <laughs> Keep it up. Well, how about the thing or things you like least? It can be one thing. Oh man. <sighs> brutally honest. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wait, what did um, you say? I didn't hear you. It was like so many. But I was <laughs> kidding. No. Uh, there's not a lot actually. I think. I mean, one thing is that we are a growing agency. Yeah. you know, and we do need more help, you know, and, and I think that, you know, the reason why I'm saying, you know, it's a good thing that it's a good problem to have, actually, where we're having a big volume coming in. Um, my thing is too, I think, which I think it's really important to make sure that we're not forgetting about anyone. So I think, you know, sometimes it gets like, hey, it's too much, you know, I can't give the, the exact time or attention that I really want to give someone. You know, because again, it's just a lot. So um, again, it's a good problem to have where we have a big volume, but 
you know, we need more agents. I hear you. We're working on that. We got one starting actually, which is good, but we need like yeah, 10 of them. More people coming on and just yeah. you know, teaching and educating. It's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm 100% with you. Yeah. So the feeling of, of fear of being overwhelmed, I thought you were going to say Phil when I asked you that question. <laughs> you and Scott give him a hard time all the time. <laughs> oh, poor Phil. We love him. Um, yeah. But one thing you did mention there as far as, you know, kind of being overwhelmed and such. Um, and this, I know we've talked about, and you're one of the few people that, that ask me about it too. And I always appreciate it is while it is great, to, to always be pushing forward, helping people and such. Like when you got to take time, take time. You, you know what I mean? And that anyone listening to would appreciate that too. Because if anybody is in sales, business owner, or just has an incredible work ethic where they want to do everything they can to help the people they work with, the company they work for, whatever it might be, they've got that, I don't know what the right word is, drive to say, hey, I just want to help it. It's not even about the money. It's not. <laughs> and then typically those people do the best. It's great. And I've, I've had this problem and my wife Tara helps me tremendously. It's like, hey, when you've got to take time, like shut it down. You can, you'll get back to everyone, but just take the time, take a breather, family, that's more important. You've got to do that stuff. Um, and it's hard when you're overwhelmed, when you have that drive, especially you where like, hey, I want to help the individual. I want to get back to them quick because I would want it. Like it's important, but at the same time, like taking that personal time to take a deep breath, like it'll all work out at the end of the day, we've got backup help is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important. So good job with everything. Thank you. Yeah, certainly. Well, really appreciate you taking some time. Again, I know you're, you're swamped. Um, that's all we have for this morning. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate all everything you do. Yeah, yeah, likewise. Well, thanks everyone for listening. We will talk to you soon. We've got uh, Steph's contact info uh, on this podcast as well. If you'd like to touch base with her direct via email, we don't put, put her phone number there. <laughs> you can call the office though for it. Um, and we hope to talk to you soon. Have a good one. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.